Hello fellow Jurassic Park enthusiasts, and by now you probably would have seen the trailer to the upcoming game Jurassic Park Survival, and it's left us with a massive question and a massive mystery. And it's something which could change the future of the Jurassic Park franchise as we know it, and it's from this scene right here, where we see our protagonist running through the kitchen of the original Jurassic Park from the 1993 film. She runs through the kitchen and passes by the freezer, and if you remember, this freezer has the original raptor inside of it, which was locked inside there by Lex and Tim, if you remember from this scene here. And this is where the real mystery begins, because as you see at the end of this new game trailer, the freezer door somehow becomes open and releases the Velociraptor. Now there's a huge problem with this because it was locked quite clearly by the two kids, Lex and Tim, and locked with an actual bolt. So how the hell did that Velociraptor escape the freezer? And what Velociraptor actually is it? Is it the legendary big one? Well, I have the answer to both them questions and they're gonna blow you a mind, so hold on to your butts. Now, there are several theories which could show us how that Velociraptor escaped the freezer and how the door actually became unlatched, with many of them actually having evidence, but there's only one correct answer in my eyes. But before we get into that, I want to clarify who the Velociraptor actually is out of the original Raptor pack. Because let's not forget, there were three Velociraptors roaming around Jurassic Park when they escaped from their pens, Kim, Randy and the big one. Now, in order to decipher which Velociraptor was locked in the freezer, we'd need some kind of marking or some kind of indication to show which raptor it actually was visually on screen. Now, unfortunately for us, the three Velociraptors I just talked about were identical. I mean completely. It was confirmed by Stan Winston that the three Velociraptor models they made were completely identical. So when you see them on screen, there are no visual cues to show which Velociraptor we're dealing with. But there are behavioral cues we can use to show whether it was the big one locked in the freezer or not. And the one most likely to be in the freezer is in fact the big one. And I can prove it. Now the first raptor that opens the door and steps into the kitchen is the same one that gets locked in the freezer. She's the one that moves to the right, well her right, our left, knocks the pans over which causes Lex and Tim to scramble away, sticks her head through the table, and then jumps up onto the table. The other raptor is the one that licks the fallen ladle and then rushes at Lex and smashes into the metal cabinet. Now, the freezer raptor seems to be of a higher rank than the second one that comes in, since she nips at the second raptor almost as if she's saying, fall in line and pay attention, they're here somewhere. And the raptor that hit her head and watches Lex and Tim run off is almost definitely the same one that attacks them in the control room. We'll call her the ceiling raptor because she's the one that almost grabs Lex's leg when the group is rushing to the lobby through the ceiling. The final raptor, which we'll call the curtain raptor, is the one that Ellie sees coming from behind the curtain. She's also the raptor the group is facing and is about to pounce when she gets killed by the T-Rex. The ceiling raptor is the final raptor that the Rex throws into the skeleton and kills. Now the raptor staring at Muldoon when the snake is crawling by her eye is almost definitely meant to be the big one. Symbiotically it makes sense that she would be the distraction, luring Muldoon while her subordinate pounces and kills him. This is where Ellie temporarily contains the raptor that attacked her in the maintenance shed at the same time Muldoon is being killed by the other two. The one which is locked in the shed by Ellie is more certainly the curtain raptor, because that would explain why she turns up late in the NC and wasn't with the other two. This means that the other two Velociraptors probably followed Muldoon's tracks backwards after killing him to reach the visitor center and were clearing rooms separately. Big one follows the kids sent to the kitchen, calls the other one to join her since she's certain they have them trapped, and then gets locked in the freezer. Now, it is possible that this was never thought of in the movie at all, but the developers of Jurassic Park Survival might have done the math like I have just done here, and thus, we have the big one in the freezer. And before you go pointing out that I'm wrong, it is impossible to visually distinguish which raptor is which from the original movie. I have just used pure logic on why the big one would be in the freezer, and it makes narratively satisfying writing for the game as well. So with that now out of the way, how did she then actually escape the freezer? Because we know Lex and Tim bolted it securely shut. Now, some people have theorized that it is the Dilophosaurus, which lets the raptor out of the freezer. Now, I don't believe this to be the case, and here's the reasons why. We see our protagonist running through the kitchen away from the Dilophosaurus. She stops in front of the freezer and then moves away. It's at this point where the camera stays focused on the freezer door and the freezer door slowly opens, implying that it was already open when she stands in front of it. And if she was running from the Dilophosaurus, the Dilophosaurus hasn't hit the door at this stage. And that's if it even does hit the door. 
The evidence during this trailer doesn't show any indications that the door has been hit by a large Dilophosaurus, and even if it did, the weight of that Dilophosaurus probably wouldn't be enough to break or even unlatch the door. So either way you look at it, that Dilophosaurus didn't hit that door during that trailer, it was already open at that stage. Now one theory I quite like is the fact that it was opened by another human. Now cue me out. We know our protagonist was left on the island abandoned. Now, are you assuming she's going to be the only human on that island after the incident? Because if she is throughout the entire game, that will be extremely boring for her to be the only human on the island. Are you telling me we're not going to see a single dinosaur attack or kill another human being during the course of that entire game? Or that she's not going to have physical face-to-face -face interactions with any other human being or dialogue. That just doesn't make sense from a narrative game development point of view. There will have to be other humans in that game. I mean, in Alien Isolation, we had the alien interacting with other human beings, synthetics, constantly seeing the alien attack and stalk prey. Are you telling me we're not going to see that from other dinosaurs in Jurassic Park because there'll be no other humans on that island? I don't think that's the case. It gives a little bit of backstory of how we could potentially see humans, but it doesn't answer why they would unlock the freezer. So let me continue. Now, there has to be some some type of big bad guy on the island chasing and stalking our protagonist. We know there are dinosaurs, but surely there'd be some other plot, which could involve them humans. Like Jurassic Park the game, mercenaries were sent to the island to recover the embryos. This again could play a similar theme in Jurassic Park Survival, because we know Lewis Dodson would have given Dennis Nedry $350,000. And when he doesn't turn up at the East Dock, do you think he's just going to let that go? Waste nearly half a million dollars? No, he's going to want to know where A, the embryos are, and B, where his money is. Likelihood is he would send a team in the next day, where Jurassic Park survival takes place. This team could then learn of the presence of the protagonist and the presence of the raptor in the kitchen because they would hear it behind the kitchen door, scratching, screeching, trying to get out, and would let the dinosaur out, potentially to attack the protagonist and save them a job. It would also then explain how a human could unlatch the door successfully because no animal, apart from another raptor potentially, would know how to open the doors. And this door had a latch slash bolt. An animal would not be able to unlatch that. Now, as much as I like the theory and I love the idea of other humans, I don't think this is the correct one because I have another one and this one I think seems most likely and plausible and would fit in perfectly with the canon and make Jurassic Park survival more likely to be canon to the universe. And there is actual visual evidence in the movie which we can use to deduce how the Velociraptor got out of the freezer. And this makes the more sense because what I'm describing is the emergency release system built into latching mechanisms. And it's actually physically shown in the clip and this scene here. Now in movies, Jurassic Park in particular, it is common for the door to be slammed, trapping the bad guy or person in the freezer and then dropping a locking pin into the latch outside the door. And in this scene here, if you look quickly, you can see the rod connected to the panic button, which is an emergency release on the inside of the open freezer door. If you look again at 2.45 seconds, you will see a close-up of the rod and button, as the boy grabs it to keep from sliding. And at this point, the door is closed and the pin dropped into the latching mechanism. Now, even if the lights are off, the panic button glows in the dark. The rod is a direct mechanical linkage to the door latch. A good push will release the door latch, even if a pin or long shard padlock has been inserted into the outside latch mechanism because the hole in the outside of the latch is for a padlock to keep people out of the freezer and will do nothing to keep people in as long as they can push that button. So in the movie Jurassic Park, the Velociraptor is probably randomly hitting the door. Certainly one of those random hits would have connected to the emergency door lock release and well, any other movie which uses the pin in the latch trope, the victim in the freezer or fridge can get out within a couple of seconds. And the Velociraptor anyway being fairly into intelligent if the lights did go out like we see in the movie, that emergency release will be glowing. The Velociraptor being intrigued will definitely either A attack it or B push it. And even if it didn't, its random attacks on the door would probably hit that anyway, releasing it from the freezer. The evidence for this is clearly displayed in the film, so it seems most likely that this is the way the Velociraptor will escape. Although not as fun as a human unlatching the door mercenary is definitely the right answer. And thus we have solved how the Velociraptor escape the freezer.
Can I solve Jurassic Park related theories? You bet your ass I can. I'd like to thank my YouTube members who are on screen now for helping support the videos. Thank you guys, couldn't do it without you. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe because there's plenty of Jurassic Park and world content on the channel. And before you go, I have one more question and mystery for you. How did the T-Rex get over the drop off in Jurassic Park? And if you want to know the answer, I have the answer to that in a video on my channel. I'm Shadows and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.